Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Hello, good evening. Welcome to Mindful Moments. We are back in the new year. I have been off uh, from the show for a while, but I'm very excited to be back. As you know from my very annoying voice, my name is Farah and I am your host. And I have a great uh, series lined up for you this year. Uh, we are going to focus, start on, off on domestic abuse. It's quite a heavy topic for the start of the year, but most of you will know uh, at least either yourself or someone in your family or friend circle or in your community who is or has been affected by this um, really traumatic issue. So how are you doing? How are you? How has your new year been? I hope you're all looking after your well-being. As you know, Mindful Moments is focused on your well-being, just a short 25-minute slot talking about really important topics to nourish our mind, body and soul. And as I mentioned, we, the topic is domestic abuse. We, you know, I always like to hear your, your opinions and your thoughts. So you're very welcome to um, call, uh, call in or uh, contact us on social media. Uh, we're on Facebook, Instagram. You can also leave an email at info info at inspirefm.org um, or you can contact us via whatsapp so let's get straight into it because you know i always run out of time and i'm squeezing in at the end um, today i've got a wonderful guest hina junejo who i've had on before and i'm very happy to have on uh, to talk about domestic abuse Hina. wa alaikum farah how are you today Alhamdulillah, I'm okay. Um, it's been a, a long week back at work, but um, back into it. Um, I think we're all sort of coming out of hibernation after the, the winter break. So I'm sort of getting myself back into the routine. How about you? Yeah, likewise. I mean, um, the winter is getting more and more harsh. Um, yeah. It's uh, due to be, you know, you guys are due to have a snowfall as well in London. So mm -hmm. that's exciting. Yeah. It was snowing yesterday and I thought my nose was about to fall off walking into work from the train station, but alhamdulillah, it does look pretty. Um, okay, so for those of you who don't know, Hina is a Gottman certified Muslim marriage therapist and uh, you, you, some of you may know about the Gottman Institute, it's, it's a very credible um, marriage psychology institute and um, Hina's uh, privileged to be trained by them and um, Hin has also got experience um, in the domestic violence or domestic abuse field. And I remember you had your first slap series. Um, was it on? Was it on TV, Hina? Yeah, that was on the um, on the local national uh, TV channel, Sky mm -hmm. Seven Four Nine. It was a signature program. We used to go out um, every two weeks, and it was essentially get towards creating awareness around the issues of domestic violence as well as abuse because mm. not many people understand the difference between the two and also how it festers you know within different cultures and how it's normalized how to spot the signs and all of that so that was my mission you know to to be able to reach out to people's homes so the sisters like ourselves can resonate with the message and become aware and you know these signals red signals should start going off for them immediately rather than mm -hmm. it being too late i feel like you're really good at reaching the the cultural community because you have a great balance of sort of from a south asian background but then also being here in the uk and also being on the channels that you know sometimes the um you know people from a more cultural south asian background muslim background might be watching and are more exposed to as opposed to you know even you know social media and things sometimes people aren't exposed to information on there as opposed to the tv so it's it's really good you have access and 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 you've done these series um we'll get into a bit more about sort of some of the things you're actually talking about we'll, we'll be talking about on today's show uh, as you all know, domestic abuse is a very prevalent thing, um, a very prevalent crime. And I've, I was looking up some statistics, actually, and I saw that um, on average uh, in the past couple of years, 
actually per year, 1.3 million domestic abuse crimes are reported to the police. Um, and I, obviously, I, as you, some of you may know, I'm from a science background, so I always, always critically analyze statistics, but this obviously means only those that were reported to the police. So the number is probably far higher um, in reality. And um, I mean, yes, uh, as I mentioned, we all know at least one person or ourselves who have experienced domestic abuse. And whether it's, um, actually, I'll go on to that and, and ask, uh, ask you, Hannah, about the definition. But it's definitely affecting every community, like you said, in the UK. We're going to be talking more about the Muslim community and perhaps the South Asian community because we should always deal with the people we know best sometimes that we, we we know how to access that community more and there have been increasing number of reports and i i think that is largely associated with people actually getting more courage to come forward and speak up um so alhamdulillah it's it's definitely being talked about more but henna i was actually about to say that domestic abuse is something not necessarily within marital relationships but is is it is it can it be with family relationships as well or and anyone or is it mainly uh, talking about rel um, uh, marital relationships um no it can be between any relationship you know mm -hmm. in the household in a domestic environment and the difference between domestic abuse and violence is i mean self-explanatory violence means uh, being in a relationship that is physically, you know, um, uh, a woman is being physically violated. Uh, that's yeah. what um, um, the uh, um, domestic violence stands for. And abuse, uh, in my personal opinion, is worse than that because it essentially incorporates all the other aspects of, um, you know, uh, abuse, for example, social, economical, financial, mental, um, psychological, so that's worse because you see that you you can't necessarily immediately um, spot those signs when somebody is in an abusive relationship compared to when somebody has been physically violated. And what I saw, because as you rightly mentioned, I have a balance of the of the east as well as the west because half of my life I've lived in Pakistan and half of my life almost I've lived in England. So I have a flair of both the countries. And so what I've seen is that, you know, as much as DV and DA uh, are prevalent in both the communities, or both the countries, if you like, um, DV is kind of within our own community, Asian community is kind of less prevalent for the fact that it can be spotted immediately, right? And it can be reported and um, uh, specific action steps can be taken towards the perpetrator. Uh, which of course would benefit the uh, the victim, uh, you know, uh, statistically, which are more so women compared to men. And then in Pakistan, um, it's um, uh, more the domestic violence that is prevalent because men back then when I was living there, the law and the policies weren't as strong. And then again, compared to how much of the policies and the regulations and the law was being implemented was questionable back then. I'm sure it's questionable now as well, but then again, the laws I have heard over time have changed. So purely because, um, you know, um, checks and balances aren't as strong in, 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 in Pakistan. That's the reason why men go over the top and they use their physical strength, you know, to violate a woman compared to um, men in this country in UK where the laws and the regulations are pretty much in place. So that's the difference between DV and domestic abuse. But then the question that I would like to ask here from, you know, our listeners is, uh, as you also mentioned earlier on, you, you shared the stats that, you know, X number of people or, or, or cases had been reported. But then what about the cases that those are not being reported? So women are being a subject of domestic abu abuse and violence. But how long does it take for them the penny to actually drop that we are being violated and we are being abused. So how many cases are being reported and how many aren't being reported? That's questionable here as well. And I think the onus of that lies with... Um, um, hold on one second, please. Sorry. Can you, can you hear me okay? I can hear you now, yeah. Are you okay? I'm okay, yeah, yeah, baby was here, so yeah, that's okay. So I was saying that pretty much, you know, the onus goes back to the communities whereby 
so many, um, you know, uh, horrendous cases are being um, just just slipped under the carpet. Really, they're not even being, you know, uh, they're not even coming to the forefront so that other people can take examples from it and deter. You know, um, just, just just move back from doing all of this nonsense. It's ridiculous, unacceptable. Mm, okay, so 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 obviously, as you mentioned, domestic abuse is different from domestic violence, but it does include domestic violence as one of the forms of abuse. It's a physical abuse. Um, what would be some of the signs um, to know you're experiencing domestic abuse obviously the violence is quite obvious if you're being attacked in any way physically um how about abuse sometimes it's a bit more subtle and oftentimes um i'll be referring to the women most mostly throughout the show obviously is a lot of the women are the victims obviously there are men that are affected by this but in most cases the women are often manipulated or in in a way or gaslighted in a way to make them believe that they're they're not actually being abused and they often think that there's an issue within themselves how can you spot the signs yeah so the first sign clearly would be the fact that you know you fear your partner before mm -hmm. saying something you're scared that you know what, what are going to be the implications if i said this or if i said that so that that means that you're second guessing or you're doubting you know the response or the reaction of your partner so that means that whatever you say, you're fearing that you may end up triggering some kind of a reaction within them towards you, which is not going to be acceptable. So that means that that feeling is making you uncomfortable. So the minute you feel uncomfortable about something, sharing something with your with your partner, you need to understand that's one of the biggest, you know, signs, because you shouldn't you, you should be an open book to your partner and your spouse and your spouse needs to be an open book and transparent in front of you there needs to be a certain degree <clears throat> of balance and security in a sense of belonging and trust that needs to be shared between a healthy relationship but if one partner is feeling uh, the element of fear even before saying something you know even if you're even before uttering something from your mouth that makes you feel uncomfortable and makes you feel think twice then that, that that's the first sign there for you Second okay, so sorry, just to ask, um, is that if you see a change in yourself and you're noticing like all of a sudden or after a while that you're fearing them? Because if you're possibly, for example, happily married and from the get go, you're fearing your partner, perhaps that could be something that you need to work within yourself or it's an insecurity or there's something else that's wrong. Um, I mean... I, I, I'd rather like to break that question down into two parts. So first you mentioned, you know, uh, or correct me if I'm wrong. So essentially what happens is when you first married, okay, um, from the get go, from the onset, your partner is going to try and, you know, um, humiliate you and they're going to be degrading you. They're going to normalize this uh, domestic abuse to a certain degree with you so that you start thinking it's no, it's all normal. That's how they are. That's who they are. But really, they're trying to condition you. They're trying to normalize domestic abuse so that it just feels normal to you and you can get on doing you know, your day-to-day -day activities. Right. So, so for some people, so for some people, they they that have that conditioning happens from the get go. But for yeah. others, they'll sort of notice a build up or a change over time, and suddenly they're they're a bit worried about what they're going to say or if they're going to get a reaction from him, and they're a bit scared of like you know doing something in case he reacts in a, a negative way. Yeah, yeah, of course, because it's all premeditated from the perpetrator's end. So it all entirely depends upon them whether they want to start it off from the get go. Some of them don't. Some of them would, you know, uh, sweep you off your feet. They would mm -hmm. love bomb you and, you know, make you become dependent upon them. And then suddenly they're going to pull the rug underneath your feet and you'd be like falling. You know, you would have been fallen flat. Uh, mm -hmm. on the floor thinking what happened to me so uh yeah there is there are different degrees and different phases at which this could you know start kicking in it may be the element of insecurity as you mentioned from the perpetrator's end 
or if a woman or a man are in a second relationship and they, the first relationship was abusive, they may be insecure, you know. So because of that, they may have a fear from that partner. But then that's a separate story. They need to heal first from the previous relationship before they embark on a journey of moving right. in with another marriage, right, with another partner. So that's a separate case there because that's something individual to them. It's not a case of domestic abuse. Okay, that that's thank you for clarifying that. I think that's what I was get, getting at. Okay, and sorry, you were mentioning some of the other signs um, or, that you're experiencing abuse. Yeah. So no, the, the first one is fear of partner. You know, you're feeling uncomfortable. Second one um, is also control and isolation. So if you feel that your partner is excessively controlling you, where you're going, who you're seeing, why are you wearing this, or checks your phones, stalks you in social media without your consent. Uh, you know, limiting your social network, why you're going to your friends, why you're going to your family member, I don't want X, Y, Z coming to my doorstep. So that's what you call control and isolation. So they can have you all by themselves and for themselves so that you can't give away an inch of what's happening with you to somebody else. Right. So they, they want to continue being abusive without and, and reducing your network so that no one finds out. And it also... If, if you're not seeing anyone, I suppose, or you're very limited to who you can see and he's controlling that, I guess he can, he's pretty much controlling your behaviours and how you're feeling because the majority of the time he'll be influencing or... Absolutely. And they, right. they, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and they very well know how to push your buttons, you know, how to navigate this whole relationship. And then... The fact that they start gaslighting you saying that, you know, because of what you said, because of what you did, this is what, what the result is going to be like. So they're going to throw, they're going to shift the entire blame on you. That's them gaslighting you. It's got mm -hmm. nothing to do with you per se. You've not done anything wrong. You've not said anything wrong. It's their plot towards you. They know how to push your buttons, right, in the wrong way. And of course, when you do X as a result of that, you know why would be the answer, right? So it's very yeah. predictable for them what the outcome is going to be. But then when the outcome happens, very conveniently, they blame the shift on you and they start gaslighting you that, you know, uh, you're just twisting facts. No, you did this or oh, your memory is bad or because you did X, this is what happened. You're not, you know, they, they would question your sanity to the point you would start questioning your own sanity, you know, and no, what yeah. do you do it. Did uh, I, did I say that happened? or was that actually my fault? Maybe it was right okay gosh it's quite it's quite scary and i've i've definitely know that a lot of the times um religion unfortunately is abused as a reason to control and isolate we won't go into that in too much detail but were there any um so so these two so fear of what your partner fearing your partner sorry control and isolation um and even and the gaslighting. Okay, so they're quite clear signs. So, um, if you're, yeah, any anyone who's listening, I'm, it, whether it's yourself, it's uh, honestly, it's very difficult to realize that you're in that situation until you're out of it and you look back and you realize, hang on, all these things were happening. So, if you're resonating with some of these signs, it's a, it's really important to act on it. Or if you know someone who who is perhaps. Um, quite fearful of their partner or or you know they've suddenly you know stopped seeing their friends or family then it, it's definitely a red flag that you need to uh, maybe look into it a little bit more okay uh, and just in interest of time henna yeah um, i'm just gonna so, add one more thing uh, yes, over there for us sorry because you know most of these um the, the, these red flags that I'm, you know, bringing up uh, or creating awareness around, they're kind of in a hierarchy, if, if you like. So as soon as the ga gaslight happens, they would then start emotionally manipulating you because they mm -hmm. know you've touched rock bottom now. Now is the point when you're going to bounce back to the surface and try to look for answers because now you're, you're questioning your own sanity. You become yeah. You're thinking, am I even normal? So you're going to start looking for answers. And when mm -hmm. you come to that stage, they start emotionally manipulating you. How? They would use guilt, 
shame. They would empathize with you. They would sympathize with you. They'd manipulate you to keep into that relationship. And they'd love bomb you to a point that, you know, the, the gaslighting aspect is totally gone out of the window. You wouldn't even feel as though you had been gaslighted because right. they're loving you to that degree. So basically, they're messing your brain up proper. That's what they're doing. Yeah. Right. And then, then again, so one minute. So that's the reason why women are thinking to themselves one minute. Oh, one minute. He's fine. You know, and he, he's so lovely. Dovey. And the other minute then he becomes so uh, restrictive and controlling and, you know, belittles me and humiliates mm -hmm. me. So what's, what's all that all about? You know, so you just can't put your finger on exactly what's happening because it's like mm -hmm. a hot and, cold, hot and cold kind of a relationship. They, they'd woo you. Then again, they'd push you back. Again, they'd woo you, and again, they'd push you back. So imagine the mental trauma that a woman or victim, you know, goes through when all these red, uh, red flags are prevalent in their relationship and they can't just connect the dots, what's going on where. And then the worst part is the, the cultural side of things whereby, you know, back in the days, our parents used to say that, you know, once when you've been married, we only want your, you know, uh, when you're dead, that's the time that you leave. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you have make it happen it's a woman's job to make a relationship work but really right. that's not the case we have role models in our deen the likes of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa the likes of Hazrat bibi khatija out there these are role models for us to be you know really pursuing and as muslims we're expected to show excellence and tazkiyah and ihsan in a, in a relationship anyway but really talking to myself first you know we're far away from all these heavy words if you like and we've created our own convenient uh, description of what a healthy and good marriage should look and should not look like. Because I understand, I totally understand everybody has their own inner world. But within that inner world, nobody should be allowed because based on their past, if it was bitter, for you to replicate learned behaviors and then thrust them on your partner. They've not done anything mm -hmm. wrong to you. If you're feeling, you know, that you've been done hard by, then you need some therapy, you need to get some work done on yourself and heal first before getting, before saying, yes, I am ready to get into the most important relationship on earth, you know, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us, uh, created us in pairs. And a woman is created from the, uh, you know, the vertebral column of a, of a man. So can you can you imagine that's how we're created in pairs with so much, so much um, thought and so much love and, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. Important. and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, well, why do we marry? We need to check within ourselves. Why did we get married? Is it just because to fulfill some physical, mental, emotional desires or is it just a thing, cultural thing that's that we're expected to do? Or really, we need to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, you know, that you get married purely to co-create, to, you know, uh, spread Islam through our children by giving them good tarbiyah. So if that is the main reason, then where are we? What kind of role models are we as parents? Mm. Mashallah, you, you're very passionate about it. You know, it's, it's really good to hear. And, and, and I resonate with a lot of what you're saying. So informing, so that actually, yeah, so in terms of the, the next part, which is how our the community can address the abuse. So, so in, actually, that's really, that's a different point. I've not heard that before, but to educate the elders so that they are um, empowered to be able to take a stand against the domestic violence, because often people do listen to the elders, as opposed to just like, for example, the woman who's married herself, obviously, if she's in the abusive situation herself, some, like, you know, the husband definitely won't listen to her. And um, yeah, like you said, the elders have that respect. That's really, that's a really interesting point. Um, what about the role? So the what the wider community is, would be mosque mosques mainly in the muslim community to hold workshops for both men and for the elderly in general um what you we were having a conversation about boundaries Hannah. if you could just um maybe quickly summarize that because we are short on time um and just how that plays a part in uh you know addressing the abuse yeah, absolutely. I mean, boundaries are, um, you know, your, your your safe zone, your, yeah, your, your safe abode for you. And these boundaries in a relationship actually need to be set 
uh, set in stone even before you get married. So they escalate from your neurological values. So what is it that you value in a relationship? And without that, you feel as though there is no relationship. So for example, for myself, respect in a relationship is very important because if you respect your spouse, you will automatically look out for them unconditionally. You give them love, you give them time, you give them respect and emotion and compassion, you look after them, right? But if respect is not prevalent in any relationship, for me, there is no relationship. So that's right. my boundary. The minute okay. somebody oversteps and disrespects me, that means they've overstepped their boundary, hence leaving me feeling unsafe nobody should be allowed to do that so it's very important for men as well as women to understand what is what are their core values at least three core values without which a relationship would not be prevalent for them and based on those values they can set their boundaries very clear as a framework in their relationship and they should be feeling safe within those boundaries and I'd like to thank you so much for coming on. Um, and everyone, I hope you have a lovely weekend. Inshallah, we'll speak more about this next week. Assalamu alaikum.